will praise God too. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that God allowed each and every last one of you all to be in the service on today. Hallelujah. But I come to give God some praise. Hallelujah. Because God has been good to me. Hallelujah. I said I come to lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because God has been good to me. Hallelujah. I get excited thinking about the goodness of Jesus. Hallelujah, because I could have been gone just last week, just a couple of seconds ago. God could have just snatched my breath. Hallelujah, but I'm still standing. Hallelujah, I'm still standing. Hallelujah, I'm still standing and declaring the victory of Jesus. Hallelujah, because victory is mine, said the Lord. Hallelujah, when the devil thought he had me. Hallelujah, God saw fit to allow me to walk through those doors just one more time.
love him on today. Hallelujah, I love the God on today because he first loved me. Hallelujah, how many know he just keeps on doing great things for me? Hallelujah, even when I don't deserve it, God has still been good to little old me. He just keeps on and 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 on, and on doing it just for little old me. Hallelujah. He keeps on doing great things for me. He keeps on. allowing us to come into your house just one more time. God, we thank you for this place of grace that you have placed us in. Father, we ask, oh God, that you pour out your spirit, your understanding, your wisdom among your people. Allow us to hear the word and allow us to be doers of the word. Father, right now, we ask, oh God, to allow this task of preaching to be easy. Father, we need your anointing. We need your power. We need your might. Let your word go forth. Let it not come unto your void. Allow it to accomplish where it is sin. And God will forever give you the praise, the honor, and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. We honor the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the head of our lives, and we thank God for his grace and for his mercy. We bless the Lord for all that he has done. Yeah. Anybody blessing for all. Yeah. For the good and the bad. Yeah. Somebody give him glory for all that he has done. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. We 
give honor and praise unto him. We also like to give honor to our esteemed pastor and our first lady. Come on, somebody give God a hand and praise for Bishop and First Lady Cephas. Words can't express, or I can't say enough about my parents Amen. and how blessed I feel to have them as my mother and father. Amen. Right. It, it's a blessing. It's, a, it's astounding to me. But God, I'll, I'll say it again. God did something special for me. Right. When he brought me into this world and I looked up in these two with my parents, Amen. I counted an honor and a privilege. Yeah. I didn't look up into a foster home. I know that's maybe some of, some people's story, but I give God glory that that's not my story. And I'm not taking nothing from nobody else. I just give God glory for them and for what he has done for me. Maybe another time I really express my sentiments. Look at your neighbor and say, we got to move. I already turned on his feet. If we take if we to that church too late, I'm blaming it on her. Amen. I, just, I told her already. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We thank God for Pastor Clark and Sister Sam and the portion of the Clark sisters. We thank God for them being in the house of the Lord. Amen. We count it an honor that they are in the house on this afternoon. Daniel, the sixth chapter. We give honor to our second assistant pastor, Elder Keith. Amen. Amen. And his wife, Sister Antoinette. We give honor to my wife, Minister Don, in our absence. Let's see, keep her in your prayer. But Daniel, the sixth chapter. I'm going to skip around just a little bit. We're going to read the first five verses and drop down to 10. Daniel, the sixth chapter. The first verse. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom and hundred and twenty princes, which should be over the whole kingdom, and over these three presidents of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give account unto them, and the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Then the presidents and the princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they could not find none occasion nor fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. Daniel was a dedicated. Yes, he was. Very dedicated. Verse 5, then said these men, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Yeah. Look. Can find nothing else. So they plotted against him. Let's drop down to verse 10. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house uh -huh. and his windows being open in the chamber toward Jerusalem yeah. and he kneeled upon his knees three times a day yeah. and prayed. Somebody say, and he prayed, he prayed and gave thanks before his God and he did oftentimes. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his divine word. In your leisure time, I, I, I ask you to just read that whole chapter of uh, Daniel, the sixth chapter. You get the whole full extent of the story. But because of time, we're not going to read it in full. But Daniel was more than 90 years old when these events unfolded. Uh, you might think, yeah, he had earned a little rest and relaxation for those retirement years. He was 90 when 
he began to, uh, uh, the story began to unfold in chapter 6. But yeah. God still was using the faithful prophet. Yeah. Age apparently is no barrier to uh, spiritual usefulness. In Daniel's case, uh, glorious gospel truth that had been building through the chapters describing his life in Babylon uh, reaches their apex. As we come to the end of what is the act one in the book of Daniel, chapter one through six describes Daniel's life. It's it helpful uh, to review the key images and events that play a pivotal role in piercing together the gospel message of Daniel. Yeah. In chapter one, Daniel and his friends were kept healthy on a dangerous diet of vegetable soup as God communicated to his people, I remember you. Uh -huh. In chapter 2, Nebuchadnezzar's multi-layered statue was displayed uh, by a heavenly rock as God assured his people, I will rescue you. In chapter 3, one like a son of, of the gods appeared with Daniel's friends in the fiery furnace to demonstrate God's Emmanuel principle. I am right here with you. In chapter 4, Nebuchadnezzar's uh, res restoration for animal-like Instant entities uh, communicates God's vital message to his own idolatrous people. I restore the humble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In an important but gracious contrast, chapter 5 reveals the rights, the writing on the wall, the humbles, and the arrogant king Belshazzar, and disclose God's loving warning of judgment to all people in all times. I remove the proud. Now, as we come to this concluded chapter of the biography portion of this book of Daniel, the final brick in the foundation of Daniel's gospel message gets laid, preparing us for the glorious prophecy of God's future works in the chapters that remain. What is the final gospel that, that a loving God will unveil in this chapter? It is not complicated. The Lord allows the aged Daniel to face his greatest challenge in a lion's den. To say to his people then and to us now, look at your neighbor and say, trust me. Trust me. That's the message of chapter 6. Is God is trying to tell uh, his people to trust me. Yes. 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 Just for a moment, real quick, I want you to help me with this topic that I want to deal with today. And that is what? You don't pray? Look at somebody in, di in disbelief and say, what? what? You don't pray? don't pray? Pull the curtains back. Come on, clap your hands and give God a praise. Come on, look at them one more time and say, what? what? You don't pray? pray. Got to make prayer uh, the end thing. You know, sometimes we don't, we, we, we think prayer is for a select people or uh, uh, for the prayer warriors. But look at somebody and tell somebody the Bible says... Come on, tell them like a preacher. Say, the Bible says that men ought to pray always. Daniel 6, verse 10 says, Now when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the window opened toward Jerusalem. This is after the decree was made that nobody should pray to nobody else but the king. And Daniel got this righteous indignation and said, you know what? I understand the God that I serve. I don't care if my window is open. Somebody say, pull the curtains back. So Daniel began to pray toward Jerusalem three times a day. And got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God, just as he had done before. The dawn of LinkedIn and Facebook and Snapchat. Instagram and Twitter in large measures are responsible for the mass shooting that have caused the death of privacy and discretion. Our ability to post just our wins and bypass our losses has energized narcissism, spun uh, the wheel of Russian roulette. For those with fatigue and fragile self-esteem, fueling uh, codependency on likes and comments, not to mention social media has forced down the throats of the unexpected, the poison known as uh, comparison. People will now live just so that you can see them cry. 
Yeah, yeah. Poster, uh, I believe that used to be a challenge one time that everybody was posting the video that they can cry. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. all you seen on the post were people crying. Foolishness. People will now go live just so that you can see them cry. Instead of picking up the phone, they will place under the post, call me right away. Cousin Pookie just died. Yeah, 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 yeah. They put it under the post instead of picking up the phone. Uh, uh, meanwhile, uh, yes, we understand that God is looking for a church. Yeah, right. a, a praying church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Feel like this is right through here. I wish I had a praying church. Thank you, Jesus. And meanwhile, on the date, they will show pictures of the food, but not who they're sharing the meal with. Let me move on. We're living in an hour where rumors are unnecessary because you are the informant. No need for no rumor because you're the one telling it. Back in 1929, Justice Lewis uh, Brandis Olmstead has attributed the quote, Privacy is the most comprehensive of all of our rights, and the right to be um, the right to be most cherished by the citizens of the nation. Public policy impacts our private lives. I, I wish I could dive deeper. I really don't have time for that. I'm gonna say that phrase one more time. Public policy impacts our private lives. What the government and the Congress do in private, it, it affects what we are in our lives. And the Bible gives a warning shot that our people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. And I wanted you to know this morning that what happens in public affects what happens in private. If you don't believe me, policies are important. Uh, please believe the, in, the impoverty we find in the minutes uh, recorded in Daniel 6 uh, where Daniel is an administrator for the president. And, and they're trying to get him ready to get a promotion to oversee greater responsibility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to bring it to our understanding. Everything seems to be lined up except for his co-workers. His co-workers are immediately grieved by Daniel and about Daniel's promotion and they are trying to find a way to disqualify him uh, but they can't find any flaws or any kinks in his armor even though they knew he could perform. They knew that he was the man for the job. They were still trying to find fault in what Daniel was trying, what God had his hand on Daniel. Amen. They wanted to stifle his progress. Uh, I better warn some people and pull back the curtains and let you know there are people who know your capacity. They know your ability and they know and they are absolutely outraged because they have a sense of your trajectory. But in spite of what it is, uh, that they have have in fact conspired in their minds to hold you back. This is a good place uh, to, to inform you and to remind you that in Isaiah 54 and 17 says, no weapon uh, that just that's formed against you shall prosper. Uh, look at somebody and tell somebody no weapon. Uh, it didn't say it wasn't formed, but it won't prosper. Uh, the weapons can be formed but they won't prosper. I need you to encourage yourself real quick as I move speedily through this message and tell yourself no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Uh, they couldn't find anything to hold Daniel back and because they could not find anything to stop his advancement, they decided to make up a policy and I need you to know that when you are gifted and when you are anointed and when you are called, you have to be on high alert for people to create policies because they are partial against you and they will make up stuff that's not even in the manual stuff that has nothing to do with your work ethic stuff that has nothing to do with your productivity they'll make up policies and rules to have you backed up but I need somebody to understand today that I serve a God I know this may sound oxymoronic to some of you some of you may not understand this yeah, theology yeah. real quick right through here. Amen. But I serve a God who specializes in breaking the rules. Oh. I wish I had somebody in here to understand today that God is the God that will put you where you need to be. Yeah, no matter yeah, yeah. what the rules may say. I know how somebody can testify in here. 
here and be a witness today to say I'm in a place that my name couldn't get me. I'm in a place where my money couldn't get me. I know they got rules and regulations and credit scores and job history. But I got anybody in here today that can say God can do exceeding abundantly. Children of God. 
how to pray. You know how to do the ducky. You know how to do all them TikTok dances. Do you know how to pray? You know how to dress. Somebody lift that hand real quick. Uh, 
I'm about to do something real quick. I need somebody to start praying right now. Well, you got your hand raised. Oh. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. with me, young man. Oh. Help us, Lord. I need you to pray. I need you to pray. Oh. There'll be no more school shootings this year. I need you to pray. I need you to pray. Need you to pray. There's going to be favor with the financial institute. I need you to pray that your business is going to take off. I need you to pray. I need you to pray. Help us for the pray. people to be healed Help us of pray. fibroids. I need you to pray against heart attacks. I need you to pray against stroke. I need you to pray against low self-esteem. I need you to pray against the suicide. Come on, somebody. Open your mouth. I need you to pray like you know how. I need you to pray until heaven comes down. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto 
Daniel and the king speak and said to Daniel, Oh Daniel, servant of the living God, is thou God whom thou serve continually? He had a question for Daniel. Was he able to deliver you from the lion's den? I need you to half out your neighbor. Y'all don't even know the time is a shout. This is a good time to give God glory. I wish I had about 10 praises. Uh, yeah, step to your feet real quick. Uh, but we're gonna go out with a praise. Uh, and I'm gonna get out of your way. Uh, but he told, he told. Uh, he called it at Daniel. Uh, I need somebody to repeat after me uh, and holler across the room. Uh,